Consumer Life, Health, Wellness, and Longevity from the world's brightest minds. And finally, two visitors from New York who believe in creativity, as do I. This is Carrie and Alton. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's really a, an honor and a pleasure to be here. We're so grateful to Moses for inviting us, so grateful for Kate Bengay for her amazing uh, travel agent skills, among her many other skills, for organizing this. But I think most importantly, I'm completely amazed that you guys are still so alert and oriented. I, I, I mean, when I'm at my uh, scientific conferences, it's just it's uh, death and destruction by this time of the, in the afternoon. So, so really impressed. And, I, I'm, and, and you know, uh, the fact that... Um, Moses invited us here. He was very prescient in doing that because uh, three days ago, uh, I'm 52, Carrie's 53, and I received three days ago I received our two AARP cards telling us <laughs> that we can derive all these benefits, and we're very excited about that. Except for the fact it was just a big tease because with one child who's just a, sec a sophomore in college and two others much younger, I think uh, the idea of retirement is just very elusive for us right at this point. <laughs> so, um, so we're going to proceed with, um, with a talk, and I hope that uh, you'll um, derive something from it. Um, are we going to get the slides up so we can... Well, maybe. If we don't, that's fine. Um, <laughs> let's see. I was just complimenting uh, everyone on, on the incredible technological, uh, uh, <laughs> how there's been no, no glitches the entire day. I mean, this is what happens to us constantly at our scientific conferences, but at any rate, okay. So, you know what? The, yeah, I've been using that for a while here. And our clock is ticking. It's bad. We're using up our time. <laughs> we don't have it. Okay, perfect. Okay. We don't have it. Maybe so, we need our t-shirt. the good okay, news is I have the slides right here. <laughs> You can we never can know. test our memory, though. Anyway, so, so yeah, um, I, I think that's uh, the fundamental thing. And, you know, we want to talk today. It, it, what's also amazing uh, is everybody's talking about what we wanted to talk about. So we really don't have that much more to say. I mean, no. you know, <laughs> I, it, it's amazing. Like, for instance, uh, uh, Michael Caulfield and Mike Evans earlier were talking about uh, the importance of exercise, and that's critical to... Uh, one of the messages of the book. But, so we're going to focus today on your own two hands. And, uh, but in general, I mean, making things is so important for us. So this is really, uh, we wrote a book. It's called The Creativity Cure, and it came out in May. And base, the basic message of the book is that we, we want to concur with what other speakers have said today about habits and lifestyle being so important for wellness. Exercise, a couple of other things that, that we very much believe in is insight or self-knowledge, the truth shall set you free. Um, the other thing is we believe very strongly in passive moments. People are very, very busy and round the clock working and checking emails. And uh, it, psychologically, I'm a psychiatrist, Alton is an orthopedic surgeon, and psychologically um, a psychiatrist. And it's very important for people to have downtime, boredom, time to daydream, like maybe many of us did when we were young, wandering through the woods. It's very important for creativity and for wellness. So this is something that we advocate in what we call our five-part prescription. The other part of it is your own two hands, which Alton is gonna talk about. And um, we have something that we call mind shift, which is once you've done insight, and movement exercise is something that we greatly believe in, what we call mind rest, the passive moments. Your own two hands, there should be a shift in the way you feel about your daily life, yourself and your situation, hopefully. And we believe very strongly that no matter what you've been through, no matter what's happened to you, if you can change the inner perspective, cognitively change the way you think about it and keep a routine and keep moving through, you can still have happy moments. Nobody is excluded from that. So we're going to focus today on your own two hands because making things has been shown to be very, very important for elevating mood, dealing with anxiety and depression. Making things makes us better. And it does, and it, and it, it has to become a, a part of our re-education. We believe very strongly in the fact that all of you know this. And, but the problem is our kids don't know this, and our schools are forgetting this. And making has to, and using our own two hands, 
if we don't do that, we're lost. And we're going to, I think, hopefully make a good argument today for that in the next 13 minutes. <laughs> um, you know, there's a recent study that came out of the UK that just uh, two weeks ago that showed that, that kids now in the UK, and I'm certain that in the US it's much worse, are spending 34 hours a week on either television or digital, um, digital information. And about half and half now. And, um, and I, again, I think it's probably worse in the US. But the problem is that that is almost a 40 hour work week for these kids to be doing things that can really lead them someplace fruitful uh, in life. And we, were, we remember that, that our two hands, and the four, our forebears, and perhaps some of us, you know, built North America with our own two hands. That was how it was done. And then we relegated our own two hands to blue collar status. Then we all tried to achieve higher education and so forth, but we forgot that our hands are still fundamental to our development and to our health and well being. And I, hopefully we'll uh, say more, we will say more about that. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we, we feel strongly that in many ways, uh, getting back to doing things, and I think perhaps Canadians do this more than Americans, actually, in terms of your culture, that you're naturally making things. I, I know a lot of knitters, and, and so that's wonderful. And we, we need more of that, certainly, in our culture and in our country. Um, so, as we said, it, can, it, it enhances health. And um, when we are too ensconced in technological uh, life, there's too much passivity. We need a little bit of it, but there's, when there's too much, we can actually get depressed, and we have what, what is considered a cultural malaise. Things um, are too, faster is not always better and more convenient is not always better because it deprives us of processes. We need process to get into a deeper place, to feel very engaged, to feel alive, to reach our potential. All of these things are very good for mood and for our sense of well-being. I mean, overstimulation can lead to undernourishment of our bodies and our minds and our souls. And... You know, I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, I love gadgets and gizmos, we have Apple products all over our house, but at times, you know, you need to remember that it's really probably better to grow some apples and make your own applesauce. And, um, and you know, I, the, uh, my dad is 89, never taken a medication, he, lo he thinks faster is better, he just bought a new iMac desktop because his other one was too slow. So we believe in technology, but he also spends a great amount of time teaching our kids, speaking of elders, teaching our kids uh, how to uh, make things. They'll spend all day making a, uh, they'll go out in the boat, they live on a lake in Austin, Texas, and they'll go out and get an old piece of dirty driftwood, clean it up, shellac it, uh, put several layers of stain and then, and then uh, cutting on there, then make a uh, router and now it's a base for it. And it's not the point of what, the, I mean, we have them all over our house now, but, um, <laughs> but it's not about the, the idea of the, that final object. It's, it's, it, it was a whole day process for them. And they had a picnic and they found the wood, they hiked around and so forth. And it was just, a, that, it's just so important. And, and you all who have a little more perhaps free time uh, than, than we do, I'm relying on my parents uh, and we're relying on my parents to, to teach our kids some of the things that unfortunately we don't necessarily have the time for. So there's actually research to back up the idea that creativity makes people happy. And there was a researcher and scholar from McMaster, Dr. Andrew Brink, who wrote about this. And he, he said that creativity is the original antidepressant. And there are, we have found through our research, and we're not gonna go into all the research, that there are five very powerful benefits from hand use. And, I just want to also say that this has become more important because we used to naturally just make things by hand or make, make the pie by hand, um, take care of our cars, w whatever. Now we have so much service that, as again, again, we're deprived of the process. And um, so we have to actually make a conscious effort to do things by hand. So, we, so we've broken benefits. down those five benefits that we see into a, the co <laughs> Unbelievable, wow. Oh. <laughs> we're saved, we're saved. Let's see where we are real fast. Uh, let's see. Wow, this is crazy. Uh, talk about rejuvenation. I think you have to go back. Uh, where, where that's I'm ahead. Going back. Yeah. Going back. Five benefits, five oh, benefits. There we are. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, wait. Okay, here we go. Okay, wait. Okay, okay, let's see. Uh, that, you said that, and there we are. Okay, so here's Yay. our quick five benefits. Okay. We're going we're gonna to roll okay. because...
Yes. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna zip. We're going to um, we're gonna, um, faster's better in this situation. Faster's better. So we're, yes. We're yes. Gonna, okay. Yeah. So psychological, uh, physical. We're going to cover these. So intellectual, creative, economic, practical, and environmental. And um, so for the uh, psychological, phys physical, Carrie. So. Uh, Good feeling and fit bodies follow from meaningful hand use. Well, what is meaningful? Meaningful can mean anything from, ten, you know, I have patients that come in, uh, clients who come in and talk about how folding clothes really calms them down. I've had chem chemist kids who work in chemistry labs who talk about wiping the counters. It can be anything from tending to your family, making a meal, to actually making a painting, or it can involve making a repair, but something that is connected emotionally to someone that you care about or something that you care yeah, about. So this, That's meaningful. Yes, so, and it's, it was yeah. just addressed, you know, the, the yeah. elder concept of, right. of tending and right. uh, taking care of people. And so one of the things that when we, we've gone around and we've given talks, a lot of people have said, you know, when we talk about the creativity cure and being creative, people say, I'm not artistic, and then they hole up and they become very inhibited, and I was never good at that. But the definition of creativity is really very wide, and it has to do with an open-mindedness. It's actually very interesting that the same criteria uh, to describe creativity are the same as mental health. It has to do with open-mindedness, autonomy, non-judgmental, spontaneity, being that way with yourself and with other people, it's taking risks. So it's not about making something fantastic or beautiful for somebody else's eye, but, for ha but having a process yeah. Again, yeah. And so the cognitive benefits are very, very clear. And some people have touched today, some of the great speakers have, but, but hand use actually does make you smarter. It stimulates your somatosensory cortex, that surface of the brain that's so critically important. And what's cool about that is the surface of the brain, I, I, I don't know, do any of you, have any of you guys met the homunculus before? <laughs> the, neur the neuroscientist uh, invented this guy, and uh, he is a representation of our body on the surface of our brain, on our somatosensory cortex. And what's cool about that is you see how huge his, how tiny his feet are and how huge his hands are. That's because 60% of our somatosensory cortex is for the hands only, 60%. So if you're using, and the reason we developed bigger brains and are no longer Neanderthals, and some of us are, but um, no longer <laughs> Neanderthals is because we started making tools. We started making things and making bowls and pottery and so forth, and that's when our brains grew and then we uh, had less hair and so forth. So, um, so that's really critically important. And um, so a question for you guys now out here if, uh, is, is, first of all, do you think you think better when your hands are busy. And I want to show of hands when you're doing whatever these are. Does this free your mind? Does it, do, you, do you think of solutions to problems? Um, and, 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 you know, I wanted to ask this before, and I, I forgot because we had some slide issues. Um, how many of you are actively engaged in some, what, what Carrie's talked about is meaningful hand use? Something, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's something that you know that you do with your hands that brings you great pleasure and relaxation and so forth, great. And how many of you are involved in educating someone else, perhaps a niece or a nephew, or a grandchild or a child, or were engaged at some point in teaching somebody that? And that's so, that's so, so important, yeah. and I, I'm yeah. not surprised. So um, mm -hmm. anyway, so uh, the other interesting thing is uh, the, the kids that are spending nonstop time at the keyboard are doing video games, and video games do have hand-eye coordination benefits, but in general, if you're using a keyboard, it's very different than writing by hand. It's been shown, the good research has shown that writing by hand, learning cursive, enhances your thought process. And some states, Indiana the most recently, are eliminating this in the U.S. as a requirement for education, and they're teaching keyboarding skills instead. And I'm sorry, it's not the, it's not the right answer. So. Oh, the answer's up there. Oh, I was no, going to ask I, you. Oh. <laughs> Oh, we were so, going to quiz you. It was a big so, quiz okay. oh. at the end of the day. Um, so there, uh, Robert Ruth Bernstein and Michelle Bernstein did some research on what did the great scientists and, and innovators have in common, and they were very surprised to find out that these people had hobbies from, from a very young age. They, they were tinkerers. They built things. And this uh, creates a discipline in terms of the self, the hand eye coordination, but also a freedom in the mind the combination of a disciplined mind and a free mind. Once you, it's in your body and you really know how to do the task, your mind can let go. So that was very, very interesting for us to, to discover. And what's also interesting is that, that uh, we were told that, that uh, Steve Jobs uh, actually, when he was in college or uh, his, college, yeah. in college, uh, his pastime was, and that made him free up and think and, and be creative was uh, calligraphy. Mm -hmm. 
So there you have it. He was pretty creative. So this is what uh, we were just talking about, the aha moment. You know, I'm a psychoanalyst and, so, and, and psychiatrist, and so I deal a lot with un trying to get people to unearth the un unconscious because that can be very useful for a number of reasons, for mental health, but also for creative action. So that's yeah. what that's about. And everyone has this. All of you have it. You've already exhibited it all day today and uh, in being so interested in everything that's going on. But, but you must be able to embrace the mistakes and not worry about that. Just keep being curious and keep stimulating yourself and those around you. And that's... Uh, and, uh, and follow that. And I just wanted to make one comment about that. You know, there were some other people, uh, Runko and Richards, who did research on eminent versus everyday creativity. So we're not all going to be a Picasso or a Van Gogh. And, and yes, there is some mood, there are some mood disorders associated with very great creators. But everyday creativity is something that we can all, we all have and we can all explore. And it's very useful for mental health and, and happiness. And so the economic, uh, uh, we, we're running out of time, but um, you know, we have to go back and teach our kids how to make things again, to build things, because that's how you create true innovation and new ideas. Because when you're making these things and you know how things work, I mean, most of the things that our kids are using and we're using are black boxes. We don't know what's going on inside them. We've forgotten and, or maybe never knew those things. And Thomas Friedman and Michael Mandelbaum wrote a book called That Used to Be Us. And uh, I don't know if any of you have seen that, but they, he talks about how they talk about how, and many other economists are echoing this, many business people are saying that the only way for North America to, to really, for the long term, succeed with economic vitality and, and continued progress and growth is through re a return to manufacturing. 75 years ago, 87% of us were involved in some direct, ha meaningful hand use, making things, building things, assembly line or inventing and so forth, now 8% of us are. The rest of us are in the service industry, and that's just not the future. So that. Okay. And, and this is related. I mean, retooling our education is basically the same message, and that is we, we have a hysteria in, in the U.S. especially. I don't think it's quite so bad here, but this, this whole college hysteria thing is... is is killing us all because the kids are so stressed and we think that it's all about just scoring well on standardized tests. And, it, and unfortunately, if you use your hands, you actually do score better on standardized tests if you do these things mm -hmm. uh, at, at part of your time. But we're trying to start a movement to bring back shop class, uh, an, an elevated, more, more uh, uh, you know. There's this idea that accumulation of facts and, and hyper cerebral activity is going to make kids smarter, but actually the new research is showing that it's really not. It's being outside in nature, exercise, just as it helps with Alzheimer's disease, is very good for, for cognitive development. So, so we, we it's officially. getting into our bodies. We have officially run out of time, but I think we are hopefully proven, and I think you know this. I mean, Thoreau knew it, Emerson knew it. Building, hand, using your hands, making things, fosters self-reliance, builds character, grit, honesty, humility, and so forth. And it also stimulates innovation, and we need that desperately. And do it yourself is is coming back through the Maker Fair and other movements and so forth. Smartphones, uh, smartphone apps, the anti-DIY. I had a couple of stories to tell about that, but <laughs> I, you know they may be. I mean, they, we don't need you know our iPhones doing everything for us. Um, and so. Uh, you know, it, Carrie's dad That's used to always dad. say, put your hands in the dirt, just put your hands in the dirt. He was a, a He a was great a professor, but the time that he looked the happiest was when he would drive us down to Philadelphia, and he, used to, he came from a family, he was Italian, and he came from stonemasons, and he, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, fences, and uh, not fences, the, the walls that he built at a certain college, he was very proud of that, of yeah. how he had done that. So. And repairing is caring. When we repair, we, we, uh, we, rather than tossing into landfills, we reuse, we recycle, we save dollars for ourselves and for our, our, our uh, economy and, and our, our uh, climate. And uh, so my, grand, my dad used to say, I love to find something broken. He still says it. I love to find something broken and see what I can do with it. And that's, we can repair ourselves by repairing these things in our home that mean something and to us. And their analysts have done that research on when you put it outside, you also heal the inside. Right. So That's it. So, so, sorry for the glitch uh, <laughs> of the this, but, uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you, you've had a proper and practical demonstration <laughs> of creativity, <laughs> yeah. which is what you need when the digital world abandons you <laughs> and leaves you to actually do the old-fashioned thing, which is talk. Oh, and, and I must say, um, when I need to write something, 
I find a big difference between thinking about what I might write and actually sitting down and writing it. The intermediate stage is dictating, but it always changes when I actually sit down, pick up that pen, and write yes. with my hands. Yes. And uh, we, we apologize. Thank you for being Thank good you. sports Thank about those last me. slides. Uh, regrettably, I had the production manager executed before <laughs> we... <laughs> Before we're it's able a good to find hand them. manual task. It actually is. It's very good for you. But your sweethearts, thank, thank you, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.